Sergeant John Bazalone and his unit were facing relentless fire from the Japanese forces during the battle for Henderson Field in October of 1942, when suddenly he realized that the weapons they were carrying would not last much longer. As an experienced gunner, Bazalone then took it upon himself to repair the damaged guns and resupply them so that his unit could continue holding off the incessant enemy, running back and forth under darkness and relentless fire to hand them back to his men. His brave actions during the Guadalcanal campaign would earn him a Medal of Honor and elevate him as a hero by a nation that instantly turned him into a celebrity. However, Bazalone was not done yet, and would soon return to defend his country in a fateful and brutal battle for which he would later become the only Marine to ever receive both the Medal of Honor and the Navy Cross during World War II. Manila John Born in 1916 to Italian immigrants, John Bazalone grew up in New Jersey with nine other siblings. Hoping to find adventure, he enlisted in the U.S. Army right before turning 18. Bazalone was sent to the Philippines right away, where he served as an infantryman for three years. While stationed at the American colony, Bazalone became enamored with the Philippines and his way of life in the base. The young recruit would then become a champion boxer, earning the nickname Manila John. After two successful army tours in the Philippines, John returned to America and settled as a truck driver. Hoping to return to his beloved Manila and add some action to his life, Bazalone began planning his next steps. He believed that joining the Marine Corps would get him to Asia faster than the army, so the young enthusiast joined the branch on June 3, 1940. While Bazalone's Marine Corps service did take him to the Far East, Manila John never traveled to his beloved Philippines again. After the brutal attack at Pearl Harbor a year and a half later, the United States joined the fight against Nazi Germany, Imperial Japan, and Fascist Italy. And while the country's late entrance to the war came with its fair share of criticism, there was no doubt that America came in full force. Soon, thousands of Americans were scattered all over the globe fighting against the Axis, including Bazalone. After training at Guantanamo Bay, his 1st Battalion, 7th Marines, 1st Marine Division was sent to the depths of the brutal Pacific Theater. Guadalcanal in September of 1942, Bazalone found himself defending the island of Guadalcanal. Located well within Japan's emerging empire, Guadalcanal was a clash of national wills. Only one country would win the strategically valuable island and the entire Solomon Islands chain to which it belonged. One of the most feared posts of World War II, the fight for the island of Guadalcanal was a constant, brutal struggle. However, despite being both unprepared and outnumbered, the Americans captured an island airstrip and renamed it Henderson Field. Afterward, the Allied forces in the area began receiving supplies and reinforcements from aircraft that were able to land on the base. Determined not to let the Japanese take over the airfield, the Americans sent many men to protect and maintain their presence. In response, the Japanese arranged for Tokyo Express runs, naval forces delivering personnel, supplies, and equipment via nighttime vessels that regularly bombarded the airfield and American positions to avoid being seen or hit during the day. In the middle of one of the fiercest battles of World War II, Bazalone quickly distinguished himself as a fearless soldier. A Hero In October of 1942, Sergeant Bazalone commanded two sections of Marines holding the perimeter at Lunga Ridge, only a thousand yards south of Henderson Field, brandishing heavy 30 caliber machine guns. Suffering from malaria and other terrible conditions, Bazalone's men persisted in the muddy and dense tropical weather, holding the hill as best they could, with constant waves of Japanese troops attempting to conquer the ridge. On the 25th, a regiment of 3,000 soldiers from the Japanese Sendai Division focused their attack on his units, charging the hill using machine guns, grenades, and mortars. The Japanese's practices were brutal but effective. After making the human bridge out of the bodies of their fallen comrades, the enemy was beginning to cross over the barbed wire fences near the American perimeter. During the nighttime attack, grenades, small arms, and machine guns were thrown around and fired incessantly. An experienced machine gunner, Sergeant Bazalone knew that the American weaponry would be tested to its limits, and soon the inevitable happened. The machine guns began to jam. Instead of allowing the creation of a hole in the line through which the Japanese could infiltrate, Bazalone took it upon himself to make sure the American guns never stopped firing. For the next three days, he repeatedly and hurriedly repaired guns and charged barrels in almost total darkness. Bazalone also ran back and forth between gun pits, carrying 90 pounds of weaponry and ammunition resupply through a 200-yard trek in constant enemy fire. The innate leader also ensured that his terrified junior marines were steadied and assisted as the unit continued firing into the trudging Japanese. At one point, the sergeant lost one of his essential thermal protection gloves while swapping empty barrels for the machine guns. 
Undeterred and in the middle of a battle, Basilone operated with his bare hands, enduring incredible pain as he single-handedly eliminated an entire wave of Japanese soldiers. Despite his heroic actions, most of his men succumbed to the Japanese, and only Basilone and two other marines were left standing. Still, the unit had managed to hold the perimeter. By the time the reinforcements arrived, Henderson Field was still in American hands, and its possession would never be seriously threatened for the remainder of the war. A Fish Out of Water When they were later interviewed, the two squad members who survived the relentless attack expressed their amazement at their leader's will to fight and his ability to inspire the team during the most fearful nights of their lives. Due to his brave actions during the Battle of Henderson Field, John Bazalone was promoted to gunnery sergeant at only 26 years old. He became the first enlisted Marine to earn the Medal of Honor, the nation's highest decoration during World War II. Instead of meeting President Franklin D. Roosevelt to be bestowed with the medal, Sergeant Bazalone asked to hold the ceremony in the field with his Marine Corps unit. Bazalone claimed 38 casualties during the encounter, and upon receiving the decoration, he humbly said that only part of the medal belonged to him, as his fallen men deserved it just as much as he did. Upon his return to America, John Bazalone was welcomed with a parade from the entire population in his hometown of Raritan, New Jersey. By September of 1943, with a national war bond tour, news coverage, and several written profiles giving him endless publicity, the brave sergeant had become a national celebrity. However, Bazalone wanted to be in the front line with his fellow Marines as soon as possible. He repeatedly said that he was only a plain soldier. Still, his return to combat was constantly delayed until the Corps relented, and the sergeant was then sent to train for combat in Camp Pendleton in the Pacific. As Manila John trained for war in the East Coast camp, he met fellow Marine Sergeant Lena May Riggi. After a whirlwind romance of less than a month, and with John's inevitable return to the Pacific, the couple got married on July 10, 1944. The newlyweds then parted ways and never reunited again. One last post. The five-week battle for the capture of the island of Iwo Jima saw some of the fiercest fighting at the Pacific Theater. Out of 20,000 Japanese troops defending the area, only about 200 are known to have survived, and the American losses were also brutal. The Marine Corps alone suffered close to 26,000 casualties, one of them being the legendary sergeant. On February 19, 1945, Bazalone and his artillery unit, serving with the 1st Battalion, 27th Marines, 5th Marine Division, arrived on the island. Bazalone instantly proved his courage by giving directions and helping some of his men that were pinned by enemy fire to move forward. Afterward, Bazalone single-handedly destroyed a reinforced Japanese position, attacking a blockhouse with grenades and demolitions, allowing his marine unit to secure an airfield that same day. At the edge of the airfield, Bazalone assisted a tank stuck in an enemy minefield, gently but firmly guiding the vehicle over the terrain to safety while moving under intense Japanese mortar and artillery barrages. Just then, a mortar round exploded and took the life of the 27-year-old, along with four other marines. For his brave actions during the critical battle of Iwo Jima, the sergeant received many awards and decorations, including the Purple Heart and the Navy Cross. Bazalone was the only enlisted Marine to receive both the Medal of Honor and the Navy Cross during World War II. Bazalone's wife, Lena, continued to serve with the Marine Corps and was present during the ceremony in which a Gearing-class destroyer was named after her late husband in 1949. Then in 2018, the Navy announced plans to name an Arleigh Burke class after the World War II legend, further cementing his legacy. As Navy Secretary Ray Mabus put it, quote, All who serve aboard her will carry on the legacy of service and commitment exemplified by this Marine Corps hero. Thank you for watching our Dark Docs video. Please let us know your thoughts in the comments below, and don't forget to hit the bell icon to be notified of our newest content. Also subscribe to this and all our Dark Documentaries channels for more exciting history-inspired videos.